people are always going to be looking for side hustles and these are going to be the best ones from my own experience because I've made $1,000 a week in all of these side hustles. So I wanna be able to share it, pros, cons, tap in. And what I like about these side hustles is that they can become a side hustle that eventually turns into a full on business. Again, I'll be sharing the ups and downs of these different ones and hopefully you guys decide to choose one or look more into it. At the end of this video, I'll make sure you guys link to in the description, all the different trainings that I have, they're all free on these different hustles. So. Let's check it out. Side hustle number one is Amazon FBA. I've been on the Amazon platform for a handful of years. I started off back in 2016, 2017 doing drop shipping. I have a really long training on that that I have on this channel, but recently it's been turning into FBA. I've been doing private label with one brand and I have a whole case study on that, but also we've been doing FBA arbitrage. So OA is what they call it, online arbitrage, where essentially you just go on to these major retailers Walmart, Target, and be able to buy an item for low and then sell it on Amazon through their FBA program for a higher price. And then you get a percentage. And that's after FBA fees, shipping fees, you still can make a specific percentage. Again, it's as simple as getting these products shipped to your house, packaging it up. So let's say you buy it from Walmart, get it shipped here, package it up, and then send it to Amazon. And then Amazon does all the customer service, fulfillment, and boom, you make your bag, you make your money. I know it seems simple, but again, there's a lot of different details in getting set up, getting started, scaling it, getting ungated for a lot of different brands. Trust me, the more longer you stay on the platform, a lot simpler it starts to become. The pros on the FBA model and why I'm gonna stick with it with my second store is just how scalable it is. I love the scalability. I can hire VAs to constantly find products, source products, find leads for me. And then I can also hire VAs to eventually start ordering. And then I can hire a third party prep center where wherever when it comes from Walmart, it goes to that prep center and then that prep center sends it out. They specialize in packaging it, getting it shipped out, labeled and everything to Amazon. So this is a, uh, a business model that I don't always have to be home or I don't need to be in a certain area to scale this. This can be scalable from anywhere in the world and I can pretty much put all the pieces and build the right system. So I like it because it's a scalable business model, but also you don't really need that much to start anywhere from like 500 to a thousand bucks in buying products, getting set up with the systems. It takes a uh, little than a, less than a hundred dollars per month just to run this business model. Plus however much you're gonna be able to buy products upfront. Now some cons with this business model is you're always sourcing products and you don't own these brands. So these are big major brands that you're buying from that allows you to flip it on Amazon, but you're not building a brand for yourself. Somebody that's in the marketing space, that's all about building brands and teaching other people and helping other companies build brand. With the Amazon FBA model, you're essentially not building brand. You can learn the whole backend and the model to essentially and effectively build your own brand long-term. But the con about this is long-term, you're not building a brand and it's also lower profit margin as you're getting started anywhere from like 10, 15 on the low end, maybe even lower than that. But the average standards anywhere from 15 to 20%, 30% ROI on a product is great. I know a lot of people that are great at sourcing, but again, these are cons as you're considering this business model. Number two is Turo. It's a car rental platform. And I like this business model because we've done it. I've made a lot of videos on this channel about it. And essentially it's just getting your vehicle rented from somebody else that's coming into town or um, somebody that's probably traveling, maybe doing business. In Vegas, there's so many people that are travelers that really rent our vehicles. It's just renting your vehicle for a daily rate and they just return it back. And that's pretty much the business model. So if you have an extra car, other cars that are sitting around, or maybe you're thinking about getting a car and wanting someone to pay that car note during the week and you only wanna write it for the weekends, this might be a business model to consider to make extra income. The pro is that you turn a liability into an asset. This is just another business model to teach you the business, understand even the car industry, the car rental industry. You learn a lot running this business. It's a lot of manual labor, but the ability to learn everything from customer service, leveraging uh, cars, payments, loans, it's just a lot of responsibility, but that's for any business. 
it's a great way to just get started for anybody that doesn't know too much about cars. They just have a car, they're ready to get it listed. It's very simple to get it listed onto the Turo platform. In fact, it's a lot easier to create a Turo account and get approved than create a Facebook account and get approved. So it's a very, very simple process. Get your car listed and start getting bookings pretty much right away. Some cons is it's a lot of energy and time to maintain, build, and scale the business. As far as scalability, there's a lot of energy Energy, a lot of effort and especially if you want to build it fast it's not one of those businesses that you can build quick like for example Amazon you just find a ton of products the quicker you can find products the faster you can scale this one it takes time right and there's caps to the daily rates so it, it's really one of those businesses that's a long game and again this takes a lot of energy from cleaning, maintaining, especially if it's just you that's doing the side hustle, you don't have any other employers or people that you could hire as contractors. It's a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of learning, and that's pretty much the con of the game. Again, leverage your liabilities, assets, there's always pros, but these are the couple cons. If I thought about scalability, it's not a super great uh, scalable business model. That's just my opinion. Again, with over 20 plus vehicles, we have a pretty solid team, but to be able to run that fleet, it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. With the right systems though, it is scalable. It's not impossible. Just putting that out there. Number three is offer up flipping. And essentially, it's just you being able to start off and just flip products on offer up. It's a really great market. We're selling products on offer up every single day. We have a flip biz where we get all sorts of things from couches, tables, chairs, uh, lights, ceiling fans. There's so many different random products that are selling on offer up every day. People come pick it up at our office and it's been great. So OfferUp is essentially a simple business model that you can make a lot, of, a lot of cash, a lot of money up front, and you don't even need that much money to be honest. In fact, you can go in, you can find free products that people are just listing for zero that just wanna get rid of it, and then you can go ahead, whether you gotta refurbish it or just wait a little bit longer to flip it, but usually people that have it for zero, they just wanna get rid of it, they don't wanna put any effort or anything to, to do whatever it takes to make sure they sell it for a certain amount. They just wanna get rid of it. And that's a lot of the sellers that we found, a lot of the products that we've been flipping. So OfferUp essentially is a great side hustle, a great way to make some extra cash, cash, especially if you know what categories that you wanna be in. I know people that are really great at flipping couches. I know people that know so much about mattresses, right? And they just know how much these mattresses go for, the different types of brands and, and whatnot. So it's a great place to get going and just create some extra revenue. The pros on OfferUp is high profit, super high profit margin, especially if you go ahead, we like find, find random like cozy chairs that people are just giving away. We refurbish it, we clean it really, really good, and we'll flip it for like a hundred bucks. High profit, not super, super low pro profit uh, margins out there, but we again, you wanna go for the right furniture, the right things, tables, all sorts of stuff that you can find on there that you can flip. And even you can buy stuff for like 20, 30 bucks and flip it for three X the price. So again, pros on this is a high profit margin. Now cons is when it comes to scaling and time, because let's say that you are starting to accumulate a lot of stuff, you're gonna need a uh, storage or maybe a big garage. And especially if you're gonna be getting the bulk stuff, you're gonna need a truck, something that can transfer these and it's gonna take a lot of time and gas, right? Again. High profit margins are the pros, but the cons is the time, the energy, and the amount of inventory that you can hold based on where you're at and what resources you have. So this would be a business model if you wanna take seriously, that you'll eventually get a storage just to hold product. You'll have so much product out there like us. We had so much product out there. We filled up a storage, we filled up a whole office, even like a whole backyard of a property that we had. So it's a lot of stuff. And then they, they flip, right? It, it just takes time to flip them, certain products. We learned a lot about the market. But that would be the cons is just it, it's it's you're going to have to invest in a truck if you're going to start scaling this and a storage area if you want to start scaling this business model. Number four is eBay drop shipping. Back in 2017, I bought a course. Uh, it was about 1500 to learn eBay drop shipping and I did well. I was scaling it. It was great. It was an amazing industry to be in like with e-com and that's kind of like how I learned a lot. And then I moved on to Amazon that, that following year. But when I started it, eBay started to eventually drop because it was so saturated, so many people start to go. Um, but essentially all it is, is you go in, you list the product from Walmart, and you just list it for like 10, 20, $30 higher. And then people buy it, 
you get the product, drop ship it from Walmart, who is our supplier, directly, and you drop ship it. You send drop shipping is just directly sending it from the supplier after they buy it from you and you're listing on eBay straight to their front door. And drop shipping's been around for a very, very long time. It's just the different marketplaces we use, like eBay, is evolving just because new marketplaces are rising up back in 2016 2017 it was also amazon so but now it's not the marketplaces are, are always evolving but drop shipping has been around for a while now if you ask me in this year is ebay drop shipping great i did a whole case study on this channel on my ebay automation store I bought an ebay automation store it's been doing amazing it's starting to scale grow so that's why I believe in this business model today. Pros, it's scalable with systems. Everything could be outsourced, VAs. I mean, that's pretty much what my store is running off of. It's a full VA team. So I like that, sourcing it from anywhere in the world and being able to ship it and be being able to do customer service all around the world. So I like this business model because the pros, it's a scalable business model and I like that. And also it's just a lot of remote work. So I don't have to be stationed somewhere in order for this business to run. That's like real internet money, y'all. The cons is eBay drop shipping is especially on the platform, it's not really something that they like. So you're risking your account. And again, it's a very, very low profit margin because it's drop shipping. Okay, especially if you're getting like $3 profit per, <laughs> and, and think about that, like how many units you have to move, and that's why it's a game of just listing and having a large collection, a large catalog of products that will eventually scale you to however many products makes you $100, and I'm talking about in profit a day, and plus more and more. So again, it's just like a daily workflow of listing and, and sourcing more, and you're not building a brand again, you're just finding random products, putting them on your shop, when someone buys, you go to any one of these suppliers, Walmart, Target, and then you just send it directly from them once they purchase it through your eBay store. So the con is, again, you're risking your account, but also it is lower profit margins for pretty much drop shipping in general. That's kind of like how it's always gonna be, especially if you're trying to go quicker shipping. So if it's slower shipping, it might be higher margins, but if it's quicker shipping, you're finding a supplier that's around that area, mainly US-based, if you have US-based customers, and you're sending it right to them, so you're gonna cut the margins because, again, it's a little bit more buying it from a US-based supplier versus, let's say, a China supplier. So. That's the game of drop shipping. Number five is affiliate marketing. And I like affiliate marketing because it goes into two different categories. There's physical products and then there's digital products or softwares. Those can be in their own too. The first part, the easiest, uh, affiliate program is Amazon. You get a very, very small percentage. You can do whatever you want, create content around certain products, this mic, camera, lighting, whatever, people click on that, you get your percentage. The other side I like is digital products because it's higher ROI, higher profit margins. There's courses that sell for $500, $1,000, and affiliate gets 50% of that. You sell an $1,000 course to, to a customer, you get half of that, usually around four to 500 for the affiliate, which is great. This is why I like affiliate marketing. So essentially, you actually don't own the product. It's not your company, you don't do, do customer service, and all you do is find the clients that are gonna fit right with the product. Of course you have to believe the product. You can't just sell something you don't use. That's a big thing with me and affiliate marketing. I will never push a product that I don't uh, back up, and personally, if I don't use it, why would I recommend it? It just doesn't make sense, but that's affiliate marketing. It's like already rec recommending products to people when you use it, that's the healthiest way to be able to do affiliate marketing. So if you use products from a company that you believe, ask if they have an affiliate program. It could be anything. The pros is it's scalable. Again, you don't own the product. So as many people in your community or as many people that you run ads to or get in front of, you can sell pretty much sell it and share this to them. And that's what I like about affiliate marketing. No customer service. You don't own the product, so you don't have to fulfill it. Once they've purchased, it's all between them and the company, and that's it. That's why I like it. You don't have to come up with your own product. That's such a great pro when it comes to affiliates. And affiliates is great because you can just already stack it on top of whatever existing business model you have. And that's why I said physical products, digital products, and even software where you get that monthly commission. So I love it. Cons is, again, 
pros might be you have the product, you don't own the product, but another con is you don't own the product. So if the company goes out of business, if the company changes its ways of like the f affiliate commission, or they change their product where you can't sell this product anymore, only this product, a lot of things can shift because you don't own the company. That's also a downfall of affiliate marketing is anything can happen with the company. You're not the one that's running it. You're not the CEO. So things can shift, things can change. That would probably be one of the biggest downsides to affiliate marketing is not owning the product, which is also a pro, but if you think about it, if the company goes down because of new owners or somebody bought it out, well, again, that's gonna be uh, a risk that we're all willing to take. Hope you all enjoyed and hopefully this makes sense. I'm going to link a video or a playlist for every single one of these five side hustles that I shared. Again, I've done all these. I'm constantly running a couple of these right now, actually most of them. And if you guys wanna follow the journey, tap in, hit the sub, but go ahead, go in the description section, check out based on whatever side hustle you're looking for, check it out, check the trainings, and just follow the journey. Thanks so much, y'all. Comment any questions you have. I'll see y'all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.